Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpslot Lightning episode. Today we're kicking off the nuts and bolts series for Azure Ike enabled servers. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpslot Lightning episode. And today we're excited to kick off the Azure Ike enabled servers nuts and bolts video series. I have Ryan with me. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well, thanks, Leo. You know, Ryan, I've been uh, looking forward to starting this video series. Uh, you and I talked about it for quite some time. But first thing first, Ryan, for those of you who don't know you, uh, who you are and what is it that you do? Yeah, I'm a product manager here on the Azure Arc team at Microsoft, and I specialize in the Arc Enabled Servers product. Ryan, you and I have been working uh, together for a while, um, and we wanted to do this nuts and bolts video series because the motivation around that to share with the audience is that you and I are talking to a lot of customers and talking to a lot of people from our field and working with many, many teams. Um, and one of the things that keeps popping up is that um, it's great that we are showing how the technology works and how the end product looks like. But a lot of people really want to understand the nerd knobs, uh, the backend, the things that making this technology happen. Um, and that's why we created this uh, nuts and bolts video series. And to kick things off, um, right over the bat, uh, Ryan, you uh, and I decided that let's kick things off with the uh, metadata service for Azure Arc enabled servers. And what is it uh, all about? So take it away. Explain to me, what is the, uh, what is the metadata service and how should I think about it? Absolutely. Yeah. So the metadata service is one of the components of the Azure Arc agent also called the Azure Connected Machine Agent. And when we talk about ARC enabling a machine that's running on-premises or in another cloud, it's really all about installing this agent, connecting it to your Azure subscription, and then setting it up to synchronize metadata about your machine to mm -hmm. Azure and vice versa. So would it be fair to say that the metadata service is probably the most critical piece when it comes to connecting an Azure Arc uh, or connecting an on-premises or a different cloud server onto Azure Arc? Absolutely, yep. Yeah. And you often don't even think about it as an individual component because it's kind of abstracted away for you, but we're going to dig in today to kind of show why it's so important. And you know, it really all comes down to when we go to the Azure portal and you see that these on-premises and multi-cloud servers are connected, that means the metadata service is sending a heartbeat once every five minutes up to Azure to mm -hmm. say, hello, I'm here. Is there anything you need me to do uh, on this machine? The, you know, Azure Arc, when you're connecting those servers um, onto Azure Arc, what we always like to say is that you're bringing resources that are deployed outside of Azure and bring those into Azure Resource Manager or uh, our control plane or the operating system of Azure, how I like to say it. And I think that in this concept or in this conversation of the metadata services, this is where real uh, things will really come to life. This is where how we are connecting the dots in the spirit of what is happening when you are onboarding an Azure Arc enabled servers behind the scenes. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's kind of a confusing concept at first when you think about Arc, because it's like, mm -hmm. how does Azure know about this thing outside <laughs> of Azure? And like, how do, when we go and make a change to it, like installing a monitoring agent, how does that actually happen? And it really all comes down to having something on that machine that can talk back to Azure and provide Azure with the information about uh, that machine, like its current computer name, the current software that's installed on it, that sort of mm -hmm. information, and being able to pull stuff from Azure as well, which includes a managed identity so mm -hmm. that our own agent and other agents can go talk back to Azure and securely authenticate with modern authentication and things like the tags that you've assigned to your resource uh, in Azure. Ryan, I'm happy that you brought up this tags notion because one thing that I always like to say is that tags is one of those capabilities or features that people are just not using enough. Um, and uh, you know, especially when it comes to fleet management of Azure Arc resources, specifically in this case, we're talking about Azure Arc enabled servers, but that's something that can be applied to any Azure Arc uh, related resource. Tags is something that helps you, or it's the fundamental building block for doing uh, governance at scale, fleet, minute, fleet management at scale, and everything that is between. So I'm happy that you brought that up. Um, another question that I have for you, Ryan, is that the metadata service, right? What are the other interactions that that service has with other services that are part of the agent, part of the deployment, and also 
um, how can you leverage or how this service is being leveraged um, in the context of this art connected machine um, and its interaction uh, with its surrounding? Definitely. So when you've fully set up your ARC agent, connected it to Azure, HIMDS is doing its thing in the background, just setting up those heartbeats to Azure. Mm -hmm. But we also include the guest configuration policy engine and the extension manager. Mm -hmm. Those two components also need to talk to Azure. And they also need to know what is our identity in Azure. And to do, get that information, they query HIMDS. Mm -hmm. So there's a REST API, and we'll show it soon. It's exposed on that machine. And those mm -hmm. components can say, hey, am I ARC enabled? If I am, what's my Azure resource ID? So I can be uniquely identified among all the things you have in Azure. And then if I need to authenticate with a service in Azure, like the guest configuration resource mm -hmm. provider on the screen, they can go ask HIMDS, can you grab me a token to go and authenticate against these Azure resources so that I don't have to actually hard code or ask the user for any credentials? So if, if I'm hearing you right, and if I understand that correctly, the metadata service is really kind of the gatekeeper when it comes to the connection between the other components, the other services, and Azure Resource Manager and our own APIs. So would it be a fair assumption to say that this is actually the case? Yeah, it's really the enabler. Like, uh, when those other services want to talk to Resource Manager, there's a lot of info they mm -hmm. need to go complete that request. And HIMDS is kind of that repository of information to help fill out those requests. So what are some of the things that I can do um, on my Azure Arc enabled servers in order for me to, uh, again, to connect the dots? Like, are there any set of commands that I can run or something like that? Yeah, so let me head over here to a Windows server that's connected to Azure Arc already. <clears throat> uh, and everything I show also works on Linux. So I'm just showing an example here with Windows because that's what I'm most familiar with. Um, mm -hmm. But the service functions the same way on Linux as well. And so just to show you that this machine is connected to Azure, we'll start by running our uh, CLI tool, ACCM Agent Show. And this shows the current status and we'll see that this uh, server is connected to Azure, last sent to Heartbeat uh, a couple of minutes ago. And you mm -hmm. know, here's its resource name and resource group, all that good stuff. This is kind of the view for the IT admin who just wants to make sure Arc's up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see here, there's those same three services we just talked about. Uh, HIMDS here at the bottom running. And then when you think about how do things ask IMDS for information they need, perhaps one of the first questions is, where is that REST API that they can <laughs> go and find stuff? And yeah. this is actually a, a well-known uh, address that we publish in our docs. Um, but on Windows, we also publish it um, in the environment variables. So um, if we look here, we'll see there's an IMDS endpoint and identity hmm. endpoint. These are the base URLs for talking to HIMDS over its REST API. Hmm. And so with that okay. information, we can head over to app like Postman and go and query the API. And here we can go and see what IMDS returns to other apps that are running on the system. These could be part of Arc itself, could be another Azure agent like the monitoring agent, and it could even be an app that you're writing that is gonna become uh, hybrid enabled and talk to other mm -hmm. Azure services. Most important thing that most of these components ask for is the resource ID. What mm -hmm. is, how am I uniquely identified in Azure? But I mentioned earlier, there's also things like tags. And you'll see here, we've got those tags pulled down from uh, the Azure resource manager available for apps on this machine to look at. What are the, uh, uh, what are the relationship that the metadata service has with uh, managed identity. That's something that we, you know, we're getting a lot of questions around. And another observation that I have here, Ryan, before you're answering that question is, you know, if I'm looking at that get uh, API call that you did, this is really how things are coming together when we're talking about uh, a unified set of APIs, right? Because if you're going to go and do the same uh, get uh, API call on an Azure VM, um, obviously you're not going to get the same data coming out of it, but it's going to look very similar, right? And that's really the premise of trying to uh, bring those resources, in this case, your server right here into, uh, into Azure Resource Manager by Arc enabling those resources and have this unified experience. So that's just an observation that I'm getting just from that simple API call that you just did. 
Absolutely. Yeah. The, the name of Arc is consistency. So when we think about how do we enable developers who are already familiar with Azure VMs, which have their own instance metadata service, mm -hmm. uh, port their experiences to work on a Arc enabled server. You know, one of the keys was, you know, take this IMDS API and bring the same exact uh, schema to these on-prem machines. And mm -hmm. some of this information doesn't make sense on-prem, like the plan of the uh, uh, image that you're deploying on. Because mm -hmm. we're just running on an existing server. You didn't deploy right. this on Azure infrastructure. Uh, but all the core information is still there, so your applications can still rely on the same data. Yeah. OK. So again, what's the relationship between the metadata service and managed identities? Because we're, gonna, we're getting these type of questions a lot because managed yep. identity is one of those topics. So uh, can you explain it, this to me? Yeah, so let's think back to the order of operations when you are enable a server. When you mm -hmm. run ACCM Agent Connect, you tell us where to put this machine in Azure, where the representation will live, and you provide some sort of credential to right. create that resource. Mm -hmm. That's a one-time credential. It's only used to create it, and afterwards, we never use it again. And the reason for that is when you create an ARC server, it's allocated a managed identity that's required even. that You can't even turn it off. And that managed identity is critical for ARC because it means that our agent has a way to go and use Azure Active Directory authentication to talk back to our own service. Hmm. So it's not just for other apps that want to talk to us. We use it too. And it's a managed identity because Arc takes care of rotating that credential on a regular basis. So every 45 to 90 days, that credential is going to be rotated and Arc will make sure that this machine gets the new credential um, and you never have to actually update anything yourself. Okay. But for apps to use it, mm -hmm. we expose that through the instance metadata service API. Mm. So I've got a different request here. This one's going on our identity endpoint. And it's very basic, very similar to the Azure one, where you mm -hmm. say, hey, what do I want to access? In this case, Azure Resource Manager. Mm -hmm. um, you go ahead and send a request. And this is where things get interesting. Mm -hmm. um, if you're familiar with authenticating against the Azure IMDS API, you normally would get a token right back. Uh, in Arc, we have an extra layer uh, of checking to make sure that you are allowed to get that credential, because we don't want to give AAD tokens to just anyone. We want right. to make sure that only trusted apps can get this. Right. And so you'll see it comes back unauthorized. And if we dig into the headers, there's this neat little uh, header here that says, hey, here's a path to a file. Interesting. So mm -hmm. if we head over to our file, we will see here there is a key that's generated. This is a, a mm -hmm. challenge response mechanism. So our API is saying, hey, in order to prove to us that you should have access to a token, tell us that you can read this file, which is just randomly uh, generated data inside. Mm -hmm and send it back to us. And if you were able to read that thing, awesome. We're going to get you a token to talk to things yeah. in Azure. So uh, I'm an administrator, so I can read this. There's also a security group for other apps to be added to if they need to access it. And if we make the same request again and provide that uh, token, then, oh, see, I was too slow. They expect a, <laughs> uh, a computer to do this, but. If we repeat this uh, and do it again, oh boy, let's see. This one's the new one and paste it back in here. Then what we will get back is a fully fledged uh, nice. AAD token to that's go cool. talk to Azure resources. Yeah. That's cool. And that's really kind of, I like how you connected the dots here for me in the, uh, you know, the relationship between the meta service, uh, um, the meta data service and managed identities. It's one of those topics that always bring those questions, especially in the context of security postures and how do we do things. So, um, you know, I was also happy that you are actually failing the first time because that <laughs> really shows how, you know, that the mechanism is uh, really working. So that's cool. Uh, Ryan, to wrap things up, um, one thing that uh, always come, comes up is how do we actually uh, can use Azure VMs to simulate Azure Arc enabled servers. And to share the context here, what we did as part of the Jumpstart project, we actually worked with you on creating some of these simulation scenarios. It's also something that we're leveraging as part of our box. And what are the things that you need to do in order for you to onboard an Azure VM as an Azure Arc enabled servers, uh, server, even though you don't need to do that because Azure VM is already a first class citizen inside Azure Resource Manager, but still, 
how would you go by and do that for demo purposes, POCs, and all that kind of stuff, Ryan? Can you share with, with me? Yeah, yeah. So uh, really to understand what it means to Arc enable an Azure VM and why it's kind of unnecessary. Arc is replicating a lot of those built-in features on Azure VMs. Mm -hmm. So there's a guest agent on your Azure VM. Azure provides its own instance metadata service, and they're deeply integrated with the whole platform because Microsoft controls everything from the hardware up to uh, the VM where you're running it. Yeah. And so to Arc enable one of those machines, we actually have to get the Azure stuff out of the way because the way we work with IMDS, we tell our mm -hmm. partner teams, first, check if you're on Azure, try the Azure IMDS. If so, that's the one to use. And mm -hmm. if it's not there, then try Arc. So if you really want to simulate Arc in Azure, you need to actually hide the fact that you're on uh, an Azure VM at all. Yeah. And you can do that by removing the Azure VM guest agent. And secondly, adding a firewall rule that prevents apps from reaching the Azure IMDS endpoint. And from then on, things like Arc will go and say, oh, you know, I'm installing on this machine. When we do our check to see if we're in Azure to make sure mm -hmm. you know, you're not doing an unsupported configuration, we'll be like, oh, well, it doesn't look like we are, and things will succeed as if it were an on-prem VM. Mm -hmm. And Ryan, this is obviously working on both Windows and Linux. And uh, you know, as you already know, we created those jumpstart scenarios that we're going to share in the description below for people to actually go and test it, test this out um, in case they don't have um, an, uh, an Azure, sorry, the, in case they don't have a server that is deployed outside of Azure, so they can actually experience um, Azure Arc enabled servers. So uh, Ryan, thank you so much for coming uh, here and explain to me everything that's got to do with the metadata service, uh, the relationship, the agent, um, the API calls, the managed identity, all this stuff are really part of this nuts and bolts video series that we're coming up with to explain our audience how to uh, how the Azure Arc enabled servers technology actually working and what's happening behind the scenes. For the audience, uh, please, if you want to uh, see the rest of the video series and the future episodes that we are coming up with, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the channel. It helps support uh, supports the channel and bring uh, product managers like Ryan into the show to talk to me about all this cool stuff. Ryan, thank you so much for uh, coming to this episode and I will see you and the audience in the next one. Thanks for having me, Lior.